Hi everybody, welcome to Dandelion Cottage and Watercolor Wednesday. I'm Leslie Watkins. So I'm still getting set up here. As you may know, if you were um, trying to come on and see me last week, I was having some serious technical difficulties and I think I've, I've uh, solved all those issues. However, um, I still have to do a little fine tuning because um, all of my saved graphics and things that I use all the time uh, got lost when I had to do the reinstall. So I didn't know that until just now. So my apologies for that. But um, I've been away for a little while. So how is everybody? Let me just check and see if you can hear and see me. And that looks good. Very good. Okay. So um, I was away in Texas for the Stampin' Up! on stage, and it was absolutely wonderful. Uh, this was this was in the middle of March, and then uh, after on stage, I went to Willis, Texas, with my friend Lisa McGrew, and I uh, co-taught a couple of uh, classes with her, and uh, and I shared watercolor techniques for water-based inks using the Thoughtful Expressions <laughs> stamp set. Now this is available online, so you can still get this stamp set, but I just wanted to show you uh, the card that I made because um, a lot of people really liked it and I had a lot of fun making it. So there it is. And um, and I used some of the that beautiful DSP, and um, and the dies were used from the die set that goes along. And there's Houdini. He he has been. Let me just give you a little update on the weather here in Norfolk. Um, it looked a lot like spring. Everything was was coming up. The daffodils were be becoming um, uh, visible. Uh, at least, I'd say at least eight to nine inches high, there were some buds and blooms, and Houdini was reunited back with the flock. But we've got a, a big, messy, wintry advisory going on for the next several days. So we're in for some more snow, maybe some ice. Um, I just, I just have my fingers crossed that the buds don't get zapped and we still have um, fruit in the orchard and uh, and all the things and meantime Houdini is very anxious to get back out again and uh, and the girls are also very anxious to have him be with them so uh, that's why he's still here but I, I even though I love him and I enjoy his company I'll be really glad when he's back out where he belongs and I'm and you probably are too um, anyway, what I was saying is that the uh, dyes that are the thoughtful expression dyes are not available right now. And, um, and I don't know for sure if they will be. You'll have to keep an eye on the online status. If they do come back online, they are a terrific set of dyes. And, uh, and I use those to cut out all these shapes. So this was a, a little gatefold card. It opens down the middle. Um, I did stamp the envelope and it looks like this. Okay, so very simple, but very, um, you know, the kind, the kind of card that has a certain degree of wow factor when you give it to a friend. And of course, I used my very special um, candy wrapper gold foil in the background, which um, was a lot of fun for the folks at the workshops because they all got candy. All right, so I wanted to share that with you and also to let you know that um, hummingbirds have been one of my most popular videos, whether I am doing a painting with ink, a painting with watercolor, or a card making video. And so um, because I did have a request in the Watercolor Card Club 
um, earlier this year that I show how to paint more birds and landscapes. I decided to dive right in with the hummingbird because I know people love that. And here in New England, the hummingbirds come back like clockwork by Memorial Day. So that's not too far away. And, um, and as soon as they arrive, of course, they, they demand the uh, feeders be put up. So I have to get busy. But um, I wanna let everybody know that if you are interested, and, uh, and there's my website, dandelioncottagedesign.com. If you go there, there is a page called the Watercolor Card Club that will tell you all about it and all of the wonderful benefits that you get when you join up. And, um, and as a special, this month, I'm going to be offering a how to paint a hummingbird in watercolor and water-based inks. So if you're on my uh, mailing list for notes from Dandelion Cottage, you're going to be getting an announcement for that very shortly and how you can sign up for it. Um, if you are not uh, subscribed to notes from Dandelion Cottage, you really wanna do that because that's where I tell you about where all the good classes, workshops, specials, and uh, lots of tips and techniques and so forth. So please subscribe to Notes from Dandelion Cottage. And after the video today, I will put all these links in the comments under the video. Okay, so that's uh, what I wanted to tell you about the hummingbirds. Also, the people that attended on stage in Houston got to participate in a product preview pre-order. And I got my box and I thought I would do a little unboxing with you and share with you what I got. Um, I also placed an order for some things that were, um, were going to appear on the last chance list. And I did that very quickly because you know that when we have a limited amount of time to place an order, oftentimes things run out. So I was very happy to get my order in quickly and get the things that I really wanted that would um, go out of stock. And unfortunately, many of them have. I'm gonna share that with you first because one of the things that is on the last chance, things that are going to be retiring have already sold out. And, um, and that is the clear block I, the clear block G, and the clear block A. And um, in addition to that, these cases that hold the entire collection of clear blocks are also going to be retired because these, these stamp sets are no longer going to be available, so there would be empty spots in here. So um, I did get another one of these cases. This is my second one. I like to have one in my studio and one that I can bring with me on retreat and workshops and that sort of thing. And I did go ahead and get these retiring stamps because I use these stamps all the time. I really do. And um, it's surprising that even, you know, one of these little tiny stamps, I've got several of these because I keep uh, certain elements, certain stamps on them because I use them so much. So, um, so that's the sad news. And I'm sorry to let you know that those are no longer available. But part of the reason why I brought them out, because I wanted to show you this. When you get one of these cases, and it has these um, spots for you to store all of your clear blocks. These things come out and they are the, they, these are the, um, just the space holders and they're extremely dense foam. Don't throw these away. These are awesome to use for both uh, sculpted flowers for when you're burnishing your, um, your sculpted flowers to use as a very firm yet pliable pad. And also they're awesome 
for your piercing mat. So um, where's my piercing tool? Here it is. So if you're if you're piercing cardstock or whatever, this is a this is a great way to get a very nice uh, hole that you can then use to um, you know whether you're using it to stitch or use an embellishment or whatnot. So anyway, so these these things I love. So hang on to those things. I'm gonna put all this away. And here's my big box of stuff. I'm just gonna I'm gonna get rid of this in just a minute. I just want you to see that it's just stuff with goodies and things that I brought back from make and takes at on stage. So in no particular order, I'm just gonna grab things out of here. So this is called the Thoughtful Designs 12 by 12 Designer Series Paper. And it's a specialty paper, so even though you um, see that reflection of my window there, I think, well, okay, Let, let's do it the right way. If we're going to do it, we may as well do it right. This paper is so pretty. The colors are Cajun Craze, Calypso Coral, Lost Lagoon, Misty Moonlight, Mossy Meadow, Petunia Pop, a new color, Pretty Peacock, and Wild Wheat. And um, a lot of these colors are my absolute favorites. And it's got this kind of an ombre effect underneath with the color. And then this wonderful kind of a shiny, look at how pretty that is, so lovely. So there's one, here's another one. Another one. So there's five sheets in here. They're all different. They're one-sided. And there's that beautiful, um, pretty peacock. Anyway, I, I think these this uh, color palette is kind of spectacular. So um, I was very happy to put that on my, my PPP order. Then, <clears throat> well, I'm going to show you, I did a, um, I did get some goodies. Let me show you some of the goodies. So while we were at, on stage, We did get a pack of the new in colors. Let me pull these out. So there they are. That's what the 2426 in colors look like. Okay, so we still have one more year of the 2324 in colors which I'm going to be using in a few minutes, by the way, because we do have a class today. Um, so there they are. And, whoa, there's things flying across the room here. So uh, we got a, a color wheel that has all the wonderful Stampin' Up! colors on it. So that's a very handy thing to have nearby as you're trying to figure out what your palette's going to be for any given project. Now here are some of the items that were, that you can mix and match. And let me, I got more of these, so let me just grab them. So this is called Fully Flowering Ephemera Pack, and this is called Calming Creek Cards and Envelopes. And there's another set of designs, which I did, um, actually designs and palette color is slightly different. I didn't order those, but I did get these because I just love, first of all, I love wild wheat, one of my favorite colors. 
and many of the other colors that are included here. Basic beige, basic black, basic gray, misty moonlight, pool party, wild wheat. And you may be saying, whoa, 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 what is basic beige? Well, we have a brand new neutral color. Check it out, okay? So this is basic beige. It's, kind, it's what I would call kind of a ivory tone. So if you think of it in comparison to the very vanilla, I would call very vanilla cream, and I'd call this ivory. It's kind of a cooler, grayer tone. Very beautiful. Really excited about this and uh, excited to start using it. And, um, and so in this card pack, it has some... I don't know if you can see, it's so subtle, but there's a very beautiful, subtle pattern on there. And then this is the inside flap of the envelope and it coordinates with the basic gray. So that's pretty exciting. The other part of the mix and match idea here are these beautiful floral die cuts. So they've got florals, they've got labels, they've got other um, interesting designs and you can use you can pop these out and use them on your envelope you can use them on your cards on your tags whatever you like and they're really cute and there is a bunch of them in here i may as well show you because i'm sure somebody is interested in seeing this let me give this a open and these are as I said, these are already pre-cut. These are laser cut, so they just pop right out. Look at that peony. We're gonna we're gonna be doing peonies very soon. Stay tuned for the peony coming right up. You know, Dandelion Cottage has a formal peony garden in the front where I've got hundreds and hundreds of these flowers, and every year I celebrate them with a special watercolor class. So that's going to be coming up soon. And um, look, how, look how pretty these things are. So these are all ready to go. If you like, you can sponge the edges or you can pop them up on dimensionals, whatever you like. I really like the black and white ones for neutrals that you can color to um, make any, any kind of color combination that's going to coordinate beautifully with your project. So I thought those were pretty neat. Um, I'm probably going to be getting a lot more of those. And also, by the way, um, as you know, Stampin' Up! is planning on bringing back the 12 by 12 scrapbooking uh, line that, um, that will be uh, co-presented with the Close to My Heart items. Uh, there, there's going to be a special uh, deal where Stamping Up will be um, folding some of those items into their inventory as well as bringing in new Stamping Up 12 by 12 scrapbooking pages. And this sort of thing is going to be spectacular in that scrapbooking. And, and I also like to take a minute to mention that this is especially exciting to me because long before I knew about Stampin' Up um, plans of getting back into scrapbooking and long before the announcement of Close to My Heart's closing, I had already started going to scrapbooking classes and I'd gotten out all my old photographs and memorabilia and ephemera. And I have been doing a crash course in scrapbooking. And as I learned, um, and as I do my scrapbooking, I'm going to be sharing with you bits of my life on the first Saturdays of each month. And that is called Scrappin' Up Saturdays. And they're going to start this coming Saturday. So if you're interested in scrapbooking, whether you're a veteran or if you're somebody like me who's brand new to scrapbooking and you want to um, peek at my journey and what I love. <laughs> what I learn along the way. I hope you'll join me on Saturdays, the first Saturdays of the month, so just once a month, at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time right here. So stay tuned for that. 
And then I did get as a prize patrol at On Stage this cute little 6x6 DSP with the ducks. Um, it is called Lily Pond Lane. Very cute. So there they are. Double-sided paper. I love I love the florals. The koi. That's I love that. And um, more ducks with baby ducks. There's a frog and a and a koi and a scenic ducks. Ducks. Love the cattails. I love the colors in this. And my very favorite, this one. Absolutely love that. And there's one more. There's another scenic one. And of course, all of these things then have these, um, these nice backgrounds. Here's, here's some dragonflies, which is very fun. All right, so that is called Lily Pond Lane, and it's also going to be featured in a suite with stamps and dies, and um, I think there's some embellishments that match. So keep an eye out for that coming right up. If you are a demonstrator, the um, pre-order is available to you right now. And, I, and I'm pretty sure you can you can get that during pre-order. So here, oh, here's some of the um, the tags that come with those die cuts. This is these are just my um, memorabilia, little paraphernalia that I picked up while I was at on stage, and I'm going to be using these things in a scrapbook page. So stay tuned for that. And this goes in here. Don't want to lose this, so let me just pop this in. Okay, all right. Now I want to show you the rest of the things from my pre order. So let me get organized here before we have a, a big dump because all these things are getting piled kind of high here. So, as I said, in no particular order, some of the things that I got in my pre-order were the new in-color stamp pads. So here they are. I also got the Basic Beige stamp pad, which I'm very excited to use to do a little tone-on-tone -tone stamping, see how that looks. But that is the color palette, so so very colorful, very pretty. I like that it's got um, a couple of different values in the same color family, so that's cool. This is called Peach Pie, Summer Splash, Shy Samrock, Shy Shamrock, Pretty in Pink, and Petunia Pop. The, um, let me see what I've got here. The uh, basic beige, in addition to the cardstock, also has this wonderful ribbon, and it's called the bordered ribbon, and it has some very pretty stitching on either side of the ribbon. Okay, and you can, I love these neutral colors. I also um, got some of these new basic gray and smoky slate pearls. So I'm gonna put this aside because we may be using that today. I grabbed some of the old 2023 to 2025 in color dots because uh, I really like these and they are going to retire and be replaced with another kind of dot in the same colors to finish out the uh, life of this in color palette. I don't know what the status is of these right now, but if you like these the way I do, 
you may want to consider getting an extra pack or two because um, they will be disappearing soon. And then this is the 2426 in color shimmer gems. So these are the colors that coordinate with the new in colors. All right, so I think that is all the news regarding new color families and product. The rest I have here are stamps and dies. And um, they're all mixed up here. So let me, let me kind of get them in order. So here is something called In the Grove. Okay, and it features wildlife scenes. So we've got these mountains, we've got some uh, kind of indistinct stamp here that could serve as either a, a grassy foreground, it could be a swampy area, it could serve as a background. So that's a, this is actually a very good stamp to have for texture in the background. These beautiful evergreens, we've got some um, little leaves it looks like here, and the fox. And that comes with these dies, which I particularly liked for making dioramas and adding texture to the cards. And, you, and there are some additional dies here for a rabbit and a squirrel. This is going to be really cute in the nature journal. So I've got that. This simply said sentiment set is very basic and really great, especially for someone just starting out. So if you're a brand new stamper and you just want to get a couple of items, those uh, note cards and envelopes I just showed you with the pop-out dies and a simple stamp set like this, and you'd be good for an entire year's worth of making greeting cards for all the people that you want to keep in touch with. So this is a great, simply said, starter stamp set. So I really recommend it, and it's very reasonably priced too, so I would recommend that. I also got the Layers of Beauty stamp set and dies. And, uh, and I got this primarily for this big open design. So you can expect to see me uh, doing a painting with watercolor or water-based inks project using that because it's perfect for it. Seaside Wishes. This is, this is a beautiful stamp set for those of you who love the beach and love everything ocean. This is gorgeous. And, um, and the stamp set is just the beginning because it comes with this hybrid embossing folder and the uh, dies that allow you to create these textured sand dollars and then cut them out at the same time. And I've seen a number of cards that people have made using these products and they are stunning. So I'm really excited for that and I'm and I'm going to be offering very soon a retreat in a box called um, Staycation and it's going to be featuring a lot of uh, ocean beach and seaside motifs and uh, and the way it's going to work is if you are someone who already has a lot of stamp sets and dies that depict ocean scenes or fish or whatever the case may be, you're going to be able to swap things in and out. So it's going to be an awesome scrap busting workshop. So stay tuned for that. That's going to be coming up fairly soon. And I think that you're going to love it because it's, it's going to help you to use some of those things that maybe you haven't looked at for a while that have been sitting on your shelves or things that you always wanted to get to. We're going to go back and revisit some of those things. And then finally, the last thing I want to show you is this stamp set. So Loveliest Tree, okay, and it features this, um, this tree. It looks kind of like an oak tree, 
and it's got some sentiments. Congratulations, happy birthday, sending heartfelt sympathy, thank you, and this cute little leafy dingbat, okay? And it's got a die set to go along with it. And people who have been around for a while are probably thinking the um, lovely as a tree retired stamp set which was probably an all-time favorite stampin up stamp set and it was unusual in that it was available for for many many years you could um you could still get that stamp set and definitely one of my favorites and uh and i still have mine and of course i'm very excited that this stamp set seems to coordinate with it. So there it is. Okay, so you get these little standalone leafy dies, which are very pretty. You can cut out that little cluster of three leaves, the big tree, and here's a um, the, uh, the trunk and the branches of a tree that I'm not sure that it would work with any of the other things here. I guess, I guess this is um, a texture stamp that you could use with that. Yeah, that's what that is. So that those two go together. All right, so that is my pre-order. We're going to get busy now making something. And this is going to be a very eclectic mix of stamps and technique. So if you like shabby chic, if you like um, sort of the junk journaling style of doing things, I think you're going to really like this. So I'm just clearing a little area here. Give me just a second. I don't want to lose all these things. All right, so this is what we're gonna do. I've got some, uh, some things already pre-cut and what I've done is I've used I've used the softly sophisticated 3D embossing folder to create this textured background. This was an item that was available during celebration. It came in a bundle like this. It was available for free. I'm going to, um, at the end of the video, I'm going to be telling you how you might be able to get some of these things if you missed your chance during celebration. And then I'm also going to be using the detailed dogwood stamp set. This is, this is the kind of stamp set that I absolutely love because it has a beautiful, um, beautiful drawing of dogwood blossoms here. It's got a sort of a secondary stamp here with the buds as they're opening. And then it has the individual flower and some leaves and this cute little dragonfly that has lettering on his wings. But what I love about this set is that it's like a designer stamp set because you get a border. So there's this wonderful polka dot border. Here's another kind of a frayed burlap looking kind of a woven border. It's got dingbats. Look at that. That is, I think that's beautiful. I love these little things. And here's an ampersand and then a little bit a label that says number and it has a space to write in the number of something. So I'm very excited about this. And again, uh, this is no longer available. However, if you um, are interested in learning how you can get one of these stamp sets, I have several, so you can see them here and I'm going to be um, offering them uh, for people, and I'll let you know more about that at the end of the video. So let's get started with the stamping. Also, I've got some ribbon here. This is a retired ribbon. It's, it's uh, very vanilla, 
and it's called the Scalloped Lace Trim. Um, and I'm probably gonna do a little bit of stitching today too. So this is gonna be a longer video. Um, I'm trying to make up for all the time that I missed last week because I had so much to share with you last week that I'm going to try to get caught up all in one day here. Uh, I also have some of the white pigment ink. All right, and then I've got some, I've got some miscellaneous scraps in here. I don't know whether I'll use those or not. I've got some of my, my linen threads and some gold thread. And I think that's it for that. Next, I have my ink. So I'm using the gray granite and the pebble path. I've got all my stamps already pre-mounted, and I grabbed a little bit of additional ribbon. Um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be using this, but this color is gray granite, and I think this ribbon is retired as well. So, um, you know, if you want to do a card something like this, I'm sure that there's all sorts of uh, ribbons and trims that you have in your stash that you could easily replace some of these things with. So, to get started, I have my embossed textured background, and this is gray granite. I also have a miniature envelope that I die cut out of the Sending Love <laughs> dies. Okay, and they look like this. So this was a kind of a, um, a mailbox die set that, the, that you could cut out the post, the mailbox, it opened up, and this sweet little letter fit inside there. So I grabbed that. Got my very vanilla envelope. I've got some, uh, the Fluid 100 paper. This is a half sheet. And then for my card base, I've got the pebbled path. I'm gonna to have to put a piece of very vanilla on the inside for the message. But this is gonna go on here something like this. I like those two colors together. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of stamping here. I'm gonna begin with the gray granite. I'm gonna grab my biggest stamp set or stamp, I should say. This one. And I purposely keep my gray granite ink pad a little bit on the dry side. I don't want too much ink to uh, come off. i just looking for an outline here. So let's, let's see how this looks. Give that a good press. There's the image. So pretty. I'm gonna zoom you in in just a minute so you can see what I'm doing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm using the Pebbled Path ink and I've got a couple of drops in the lid of my case. I'm going to use that to paint with. I'm going to grab a brush. Oops, sorry, sorry if I bumped the camera there. And I'm going to begin with just a little bit of water just to, to kind of melt the ink that's um, already <laughs> on there from the stamping. Let's zoom you in so you can see better. There you go. I think you can see that all right. Hi, Deb. Hi, Sandra. Thank you for joining in at this odd time. We'll be back on schedule tomorrow. 
with uh, Paper Crafting Thursday at 12 noon, and then again on Saturday for the Scrapping Up 12 noon debut of my, um, my, my new journey into scrapbooking. I'm very excited about it. So you can, I, I think you can see that just by adding water to the ink that I stamp the image with, there's plenty of color there. Okay, so so I'm just, and I'm not I'm not filling in all the areas. I'm I'm leaving plain paper in some of the places for highlights. Now, um, if you're interested in learning more about watercolor concepts like the direction of light, value, um, how, to, how to achieve texture and design, I talk about all of those things throughout the Watercolor Card Club videos and also in our Zooms where you get individual attention. So if anybody is thinking that you might want to up your your painting, whether it's with watercolors or as I'm doing here today with water-based inks, that might be something that um, that you'd enjoy. And, and also it's a it kind of goes without saying, it's a fabulous group of people and uh, very friendly, very uh, inspiring, and, I, and we love getting together and sharing what we're doing. And you, all, you also have the one-on-one uh, -on -one individual instruction, so if you have a particular uh, problem that you're struggling with or, or you're just curious about something, you can ask me whatever questions you may have. All right, so there we go. So that's the uh, beginning. Now I want to get some of these places a little bit darker so I can go into my, um, let me see if I can get this on the camera at the same time. So I'm just, I'm just grabbing some ink from the lid of my ink pad and I'm just going to darken up some strategic places here. And, um, and I find that the uh, pebbled path goes very nicely with this uh, gray granite. They're both kind of warm neutrals. So when I say warm, I'm talking about the temperature of the color, which is something else that I talk about quite a bit in the Watercolor Card Club. It's uh, too much to go into a quick video like this. Well, this, by the way, I do realize this is not a quick video, but I think you know what I mean. All right. I love, I, I also love dogwoods. When I was a, a little girl, my mother still had a, a little piece of property that had once had a, a cabin on it. Sadly, that cabin burnt down. But when my mom was a little girl, she and her family um, lived in Queens, New York. So one of the boroughs of New York City, Jamaica, Queens. And during the summer, they would head up upstate New York to this little property. And it wasn't, it wasn't very big, but it was enough to get them out of the city and to get them into nature. And, um, and I'm sure it was very rural back then because we're talking about the um, 20s and the 30s. And I think that, I think, well, my mom inherited the property. She had it and then gave it to me. But at that time, you couldn't build on it. It was too small a lot. So I ended up selling it to the adjoining um, neighbor and they were very happy to have it but what I'm getting at here in this very long rambling story is 
it had dogwood trees on it that were just beautiful. And as you drove down the road, you know, you, it was, it, as I said, it was very rural country road and you'd be driving down this road and all of a sudden in the spring, you'd come to this, this place where all these dogwoods were blooming. So when I saw this dogwood stamp set in the celebration brochure, I, not only did I love the stamp set for all the reasons that I mentioned earlier, but also because it reminds me of my mom. And I have old pictures of my mother as a little girl with her sort of Buster Brown haircut um, and her family when, the, when that little cabin was still there. So at some point in the future, I don't know when, but during my scrapbooking journey, I will probably be making a page um, of my mom and the and the cabin, and I'll and I'll be able to use the stamp in the background to help embellish the page. So I'm really excited about that. It's so interesting as a as a gardener and somebody who loves nature. I love how different shrubs and flowers and trees will remind people of things that are that are important to them or people, you know, sometimes people share say a peony root and uh, and they're very peonies are very long lived so they'll be in your garden forever basically. So if you're lucky enough to have a an old place that maybe was your grandparents or your parents or whomever and you've got that flower to be reminded of them with. All right, so I think, um, I also I wanna add a little bit of a background to this. Let me just add a little more detail to these petals. The dogwood blossoms are very distinctive because it's one of the um, flowers that features just four petals. And on the edges of those four petals are this little kind of a scallop, very distinctive. That's how you know it's a uh, Cornus uh, floridia. The minute you see it, that's the botanical name of our native dogwood. There are also many, many other members of the cornus flowering, or I'm sorry, cornus family shrubs. I have a whole bunch of them growing in the native area of my gardens because um, because they're just they're just so attractive, and um, and I like to grow as many natives as possible. For the, for the pollinators and for the birds and the other animals. I, I love having them come visit. Um, so I just want to, one, one of the, oftentimes when you look at these little scallops at the edges of the petals, they'll have a, a little bit of a extra tonality. And so I just want to capture a little bit of that that detail here. There we go. And I love when these beautifully drawn stamp sets come out because um, you know every once in a while I like to do something cute or whimsical, but really my heart lies in this beautifully drawn, beautifully designed. So I think you can start to see something developing here. Just working my way around.
Okay, and then uh, what I'd like to do is I want to put a little bit of a toned background on here. So I'm just I'm just going to grab some uh, plain water and just kind of bring it up to the edge of the artwork. Just a, a wash of water, and then uh, just let the ink sort of move of its own accord, just to get a, a soft tone. All right, I think you can see that okay on camera. There we go. And all these inner places. Soften that edge. Same on this side. So again, just going in with uh, plain wet water, just kind of splashing that all around. And then I can add my color. Again, I'm used, for this, um, I'm using the Pebbled Path, which is a warm neutral, very pretty, beautiful color. And um, we've got it, it's one of the in, current in colors, so we've got it for another year. Thank goodness, I'll be sad when it goes away. But uh, definitely one that I'll be keeping in my in my stash for future use. Okay, and um, get a little darker down here. Now the reason I'm doing this is because I want to come back in with my white ink, and if the cardstock could take a wash like this, then I, would, I wouldn't bother doing this. I'd be painting right on the pebbled path, but, or the, or the uh, gray granite, either one. But what happens is it will, those, um, the cardstock will not take the, I'm going to go walk here, will not take the water that the Fluid 100 paper will take. So I'm creating a tone so that I can go back in now um, with my white and pick up some highlights. So I'll show you what I mean. Now don't forget that the Fluid 100 paper has a little bit of a tone as well. So this is going to look really bright. And I'm using this just about full strength. My, my brush is a little bit damp, so I'm going to my water. Okay, I'm adding a little bit of water and then, oh, sorry, off camera. Let me do that again. Adding a little bit of water and just mixing it with my pure white ink. And this is the white pigment ink that we use for the craft pad okay so this is this is great to have on hand for for when you want to do some highlighting like this and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a few strokes here and there just to pick up the white of those petals and I may have to go over these areas a couple of times to get it as bright as I as I want them to be but I'm looking to create that beautiful range of, of tones from my, my uh, brightest white to my darkest darks. And I am going to go back in with the darks before I'm done here.
I'm just building that up. So I'm building up my lights and I'm building up my dark areas as I as I go. All right, now I can go back into my pebbled path. And just add a couple of little accents here and there. All right, so I think that's about enough for now. I want to get on to the next step. The uh, centers of these flowers have a, a little bit of texture to them. And I can even add some very fine lines on the leaves to indicate where the veins are. Just a, just here and there, a few details. On Saturday, when I bring you scrapping up Saturday, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm losing my voice. Um, I'm going to show you some, some new product that I've been getting to prepare for my scrapbooking. So if you're somebody who um, is interested in journaling, bookmaking, uh, junk journaling, making sketchbooks, all those kinds of things. You're going to want to see some of the, the really fun things that have been coming in. And uh, I'm very excited about them. All right, I think that's enough. Um, I'll go back, I'll give the white places just a little more opacity just build that up want those beautiful white blossoms to shine Okay, I'm going to call that done for now. Move these things out of the way. I'm going to, I'm going to let this dry a little bit because I, I do want to go ahead and fussy cut and um, do some sponging around the edge, but you can you can see it's still a little bit damp. So there there that is. And let's see. Oh, there's Beverly. Hi, Bev. Thank you very much, Charlotte. Charlotte from Texas. Charlotte, I'm. I was in Texas. It was wonderful. It was really. I had the best time ever. And uh, there's Deb. The white adds so much. Yeah. The 
um, doing these, um, oops, I got some water on my, my embossing piece there. Um, yeah, the white, the white adds a lot. And, uh, Sandra got some of the white. Oh, she used it for coloring popcorn. Well, similar idea. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So I've got stuff all over the place here. Um, this is my card base. I'm going to put that there. And now that I've got that splotchy business, I think I'll put it like this. All right. And um, I'm going to need a um, another piece of paper to do my stitching and everything on. So let me let me find that. Okay, this is the very vanilla. Wait a minute. This feels like thick, but it's in, I think I put thick, very vanilla in my thin folder. That's not good. All right, there's the thin. So there's a piece of the thin. I'm just going to cut this down, so, I'm, so I need a piece for the inside of the card. So that um, the area on the inside for the message, I'm just going to make it, um, let's say, I'm going to make it an inch smaller. So let's say three and a quarter by four and a half. And that'll be for the inside. Okay, and then that'll go inside my card, and I think I want to do a little stamping of that. So while I have it out. back to my blunt pebble path or I think I'll go with the gray granite and keep it soft on the inside. So I'm going to grab my gray granite and I'm going to use this fabulous polka dot border. I'm just going to put that So, oh, I think I want to go right to the edge. I'm going to add some more. I'm going to go right around. For that little section, I'm going to wipe off part of my stamp, get that in there, okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, stamp off, and I'm going to soften that as it gets closer to the inside and just kind of let that fade away. There's a little bit of a echo. All right, and then go around the edges, and quick sponging. I'm going to 
stress these edges a little bit. So I'm using my uh, scissor. Now I do have in my craft room, I do have one of those round distressing tools. I need to go get that and bring it up here where I do my videos because that is a super handy tool to have. But this works too. And I'm being a little bit rough. I want I want um, I want those edges to be kind of frayed and if I even if I were to tear a little bit that would be okay too. And then I'm going to go back in add some more of my sponging and just get a little bit on the not just on the edge but also on the surface of the card. And having those those frayed edges are going to help to accentuate this sponging. And I can come in to my corners a little bit. There's a little bit of ink on my sponge, and that's fine. So it's a, it's a slightly different color than what the uh, ink pad is here, but that but that's great. Okay, so I've got something now that looks like this. It almost looks like it's um, 3D, which is kind of cool. And I'm going to go ahead and glue that down. Hey, Tommy, another Texan. All my Texas friends are coming out. Catching up with you. And, and oh, thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry, you know, for those of you who were expecting a quick video, well, this is going to be a longer one, so you may want to uh, watch it in sections if it's more than you're ready to take on. But I just, you know, last last week when I didn't have the ability to go live, I, um, I felt so bad because, um, you know, coming back with all the goodies and the unboxing and the adventure and I wasn't able to share that with you so um, I thought I'd, I'd throw the kitchen sink at you today I'm gonna give that a burnish with my bone folder All right, so there's a nice spot to put your message on the inside. And then of course we have this section on the outside. Now I'm not going to glue this down until the end because I think what I want to do is add some stitching to this. And, uh, and I do have this awesome lace like so. Okay, so I'm thinking something like that along the edge. Um, let's see how we're... Right, this is feeling pretty dry. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to fussy cut. And I'm not going to be super duper careful. Just sort of in between. Not too little, not too much. Sorry if I'm off camera. Trying not to get my head. You don't you don't need to see the top of my head, that's for sure. So um did Tommy and Charlotte, my my Texas friends here, I had the opportunity to go to the Houston livestock and rodeo show while I was in Texas. My my wonderful friend Lisa McGrew treated me to the most amazing experience. I'm wondering have have either of you been? Apparently it's a it's a tradition that's going on for over 30 years and it is quite the extravaganza um, I think it's the largest show of its kind on the planet. It's huge. 
And the day I was there turned out to be the, the last day of the rodeo, which meant that some of the finals for the, to prepare for the grand championship took place. So I got an extra treat to the, to the not only the champions, but um, to see two of their trials as they were, um, you know, coming into the home stretch. And it was amazing. I mean, the animals are athletes as well. So those horses were just beautiful to look at and to see them, you know, go through all the barrel, um, what do you call it? The barrel, whatchamacallit, and the, um, the, the calf roping and the, the, um, the guys that just work there to make sure all the animals go back into the chute and their horses, they may have been my favorite part of the whole show. I guess it's called barrel racing. And, um, and I got to see uh, both the, the men's and the women's finals. And it was exciting. It was really, really so much fun. You can... <laughs> Go back onto my Facebook page and see some of the short films or videos that I made during the during the contests, and I think you get a sense of just how exciting these things are. Um, just got to get into some of these little places here, and then of course after after the rodeo is the concert. So I got. I got treated to a concert afterwards in the same spot. Um, they have this amazing stage that they roll out. It's gigantic. It's It's got to be six, seven stories high with lights and it revolves and it's fireworks. Oh my gosh. Too, too much fun. Okay. So there is my my uh, little flower cut out. I'm going to go ahead and grab my pebbled path this time and put a little of this around the edges. This is going to be a, um, a very technique heavy card. So um, <laughs> You know, if some of the if if some of these ideas are new to you, I hope they inspire you, and I hope that um, they don't scare you away from getting started. Because you can make a beautiful card very simply with just stamps, ink, and paper, which I will, you know, share with you from from time to time as well. But because I have my painting background, I love to combine the paper crafting with the painting as well. All right, so there's there's that. I've got my lace. Where's my little envelope? Where'd that end up? Here it is. Okay, so I've got this cute, tiny little envelope that goes together, something like that. So let me burnish those folds. I'm going to go around the edges. A little ink. Okay, and then using my glue I know this is so tiny, I better zoom you in for this. All right, so all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little bit of glue on that edge, on that edge. Hold that in place for just a moment. And then in my um, stamp set, 
I've got this label with the number on it or or the place to put a number on it. I'm going to use that. So I've got a little scrap of paper that'll work just fine. Grab my ink. This is, this is a scrap of the um, Fluid 100 paper, which is actually about 140 pound paper, so it's nice and thick, which means that if you wanted to make little tags or, um, you know, anything, anything that you needed some extra stiffness to, it's going to work great. I'm just going to give that a quick snip. Do I want it outside the envelope or do I want it inside the envelope? I think it looks kind of cute inside the envelope. And I'm gonna I'm gonna get really fussy here. Um, I have I have my old Stampin' Up Punch. This one was one that made a teensy, teensy little hole, like the size of a needle hole. I don't even know. It's like a sixteenth of an inch maybe. And then I'm going to use my linen thread. Let's see if I can push that through there without the needle. And I did, I got lucky. That doesn't always happen. I'm gonna turn my little label into a tag. that in a knot. There we go. All right. Okay, there's my, my adorable but very fussy little tag. And then I'm going to grab, if I can put my hand on it, I see it. I've got some uh, gold here. I'm just going to put a number on here. I'll put 11. That's my favorite number. And I've got my mini dimensionals. I'm just going to snip the edge. All right, and now I'm just gonna pop that into my envelope, and this is gonna be a really cute embellishment. All right, so there, there that is. That on my card somehow. And we're coming into the home stretch here, folks. I hope you have coffee. I have coffee. Uh, Cheers. Mm. So good. Can you zoom me out a little bit? Now, I think what I want to do is I want to rough up the edges of this as well. Um. Oh, Sandra, lucky you. That's funny. So Sandra says that she has she has this uh, hole punch also 
this is a rare item. Not a lot of people have this. And uh, and she says she's been a Stampin' Up! demonstrator for 20 years. I didn't know that, Santa. That's a long time. Did Were you at... Uh, on stage this year? Did you did you go to on stage? You know, I know a lot of you watch the videos and you don't say anything or comment, which is which is fine, but I wish you would. I'd love to I'd love to have you comment, tell me where you're from and uh and what you're up to. And and, and if you're not comfortable doing that, that's fine. It's entirely up to you. But, you know, when I was at on stage, I never know who you all are because I don't always see your faces and you don't always recognize somebody by their Facebook pictures. And there were a handful of people that came up to me, especially when I was wearing that wonderful Dandelion Cottage Design t-shirt. That really helped because then uh, I had all kinds of people saying, oh, I've seen your videos, and uh, so nice to meet you, and and all the all the sweet things. That um, if I was just wandering around incognito, and you were all, you know, incognito, we wouldn't we'd be we'd be ships passing in the night. So I love it when you take the time to uh, let me know that uh, we're you know we're friends on Facebook, and and that you you like what you see, and and. Um, Hopefully, most importantly, that I am inspiring you to make something beautiful because that's the reason why I do it is just to you know have this wonderful community of of uh, artists and paper crafters and bookmakers around the world. It's so exciting. I mean, this was truly the uh, silver lining of the pandemic cloud because it caused me to um, take the time to learn how to present all these things to you online, which I may not have uh, done, at least not to the degree that, that I've done it now. So there you have it. Okay, so that's looking good. I want to, um, let me get my scrap pad out here because I want to I want to pick up some of that those raised areas I'll give you a close-up you don't need to see my messy desk that's it that's a disaster whoa there goes my overzealous zoom okay so see I'm just I'm just very lightly just uh, rubbing a little bit of ink to pick up that design and that texture, um, it, it feels really nice. You know, I, I one of the things that I love about um, card making and paper crafting in general is the tactile quality of it. So I, I love that, you know, when you when you hold these things in your hands, you you you're also kind of it's, it's a sensory experience. So, so all sorts of things are happening. There's the element of surprise, you know, if it's an envelope or a box, what's in it. And then, you know, the surprise of uh, seeing the thing and holding it for the first time. You know, the reason, the reason I found Stampin' Up! in the first place and why I use Stampin' Up! for my um, supplies and materials for my classes is the quality and I had been hunting high and low for good quality paper to be able to make a sturdy little uh, display case for an ornament I was making. And I was hitting a lot of roadblocks. And then finally, out of desperation, I um, found this company online, which I had never heard of, Stampin' Up! And, um, and I got the paper, and it was perfect. It worked perf perfectly. And so... Um, that was the beginning. That was the beginning. And now it's been uh, seven years. Oh, that's another thing I forgot to tell you. Did you know that I should actually have, a, I should have announced it, but um, I celebrated my seven year anniversary while I was in Texas with all those wonderful crafters down there. So they helped me celebrate seven years of uh, being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator 
which has only gotten better and better and better as time has gone on. And, um, and now with the addition of scrapbooking, I think it's going to be even more exciting. So now I'm going to do something. I'm going to uh, turn the, I'm going to mute the sound. I'm going to run over to the sewing machine and I'm going to stitch this lace down. So it's going to take me just a couple of minutes. So if you want to jump up and, um, you know, stretch your legs or whatever, now's your chance. And I will just put these things so you have something to look at while I'm busy doing that. All right. So there, there's the pieces. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. So, I'm just gonna take these ends and, and tie them. I am not an expert seamstress by any measure. And um, it's, always, it's always a risk when I get up and use the machine because I'm always afraid I'm gonna get a tangle or something's <laughs> gonna go wrong. But fortunately, that came out or pretty good. It's not exactly straight, but that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and stitch this, I mean, not stitch, glue this onto my card base. There we go. And I'm using for this I have my um, my favorite metallic gold thread in the machine, so it's going to add a little bit of sparkle. Okay, so there's my base. Let's give that a little bit of a burnish, like so. Then I've got this and this. Um, I think I'm going to put a little bit of, uh, let me see, what do I have here? I want to add a little extra, like, uh, paper or fabric. That's too small. Um, oh, I know. I've got it. Hold on. I 
we're going to go into my my stash of candy wrapper foil. So some of you may recognize this as the Ferraro Rocher foil. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to glue down. This is going to take a second to dry, but I'm just going to glue down my dogwood and and as you can see this one is torn and that's fine it doesn't matter one bit that it's torn because we're going to tear it some more in just a minute put it this way And get that glue spread out. All right, and then I'm just going to, I just want a little bit of this showing, so I'm just going to pull bits away here and there because this uh, foil is so thin you can do this easily um, the other thing you could do if you wanted to get out those um, gilding flakes they're a lot of fun that they are at actually going to be on the um, the retiring list on the last chance list so if you want to grab some of those gilding flakes you don't need many um, I have a couple of extra containers which constitutes more than a lifetime supply um, but boy are they fun to use for special projects when you want to add just a little bit of extra pizzazz and um, and glimmer. All right, so that's looking pretty good. This that's too big. Let's get that a little smaller. So what I'm doing is I'm just I'm just building up my card design. So I had an idea ahead of time of what I wanted to do here, but I I um, I'm also working on autopilot too and you know sometimes you don't have to know exactly where you're going with something in fact you can't know until you see the steps that you've taken ahead of time and um, and sometimes they come out all right sometimes they don't but it's the process and it's the fun of doing it so don't don't what I'm getting at here is do not be afraid to start just just begin and have fun and let the process take you where it will and um, you know a couple of years ago I, ha I did a, a series of designs that I um, put together in a, a design book as a collection of various techniques and things that I could uh, refer to and go back to and look at and um and those things i think they're just so valuable you know and and those you know by doing that you begin to learn what it is that you um you know what what your special items are that you can or techniques i should say that you can add to your projects all right so i'm liking that pretty well and um, I do have one more thing. I just want to see what this looks like, which is this um, gray granite ribbon, which let's say maybe, maybe a bow. Let's see what that looks like. I love this color. I'm a, I'm a neutrals kind of designer.
Doesn't mean I don't like color, I sure do, but every once in a while I just like to um, keep it simple. All right, so I like this. I'm gonna go ahead and trim my tails. These are the wrong scissors for trimming my tails, but it's what I have handy. All right. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this down. Being careful not to go to the tippy edge, just close enough so that that thin foil stays in place. And I think I'll use my, my handy tweezers for this. Um, like that. Okay, Bev, Bev says, oh, first I need to refill my candy so I get the wrappers. Absolutely. You know, when, um, when my mom was alive, she knew how much I loved those Ferraro Rochers, and she'd give me a great big um, package of them for Christmas every year. So whenever I saw that package all wrapped up under the tree, that, that certain shape, I, I knew what it was. And I was happy to have it. And then, of course, my mom died. And, um, and then out of the blue, i got to show you this. Out of the blue, my friend and downline, Marie Christine and Cheryl, started giving me the, these, um, the mega case of Ferraro Rocher. So I have a good supply. And um, I really recommend that you let somebody in your life know that you're happy to have them at Christmas time, and that way you'll have plenty of um, these wonderful wrappers to add to your projects. All right, so there we go. That's looking kind of cute. Um, I have my adorable little envelope here, which I I love these little things. I don't know. I don't know why. I just do. And, uh, and that's, and I'm just deciding whether or not I want to pop that up. And I kind of think I do. So back to my dimensionals and I'm going to use up the edge again for this. Always use your edges. There's a lot of good material there for you. And that on the back, actually the front, but I'm calling it the back. And then, now before I put that down, I want to get my bow. So here's my bow, and I'm looking for my blue dots. They're buried. Now, I find that my bows have a right side and a wrong side. Um, everybody makes their bows a little bit differently, so uh, that may or may not be the case for you. So I want to be sure to get my glue dot on the back of my bow. All right, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and put two on this one. Heck, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for gold here and put on three because I want this to stay put and it's a little bit bumpy. Get that off. All right, and I'm just going to put that as if it were making a bouquet on my dogwoods and then add my little envelope off to the side. All right, there you have it. Let's clear off the desk. I should do the envelope. Let's, let's put a quick stamp on the back of the envelope, shall we? What do we have here? Oh, this one for sure. I love that. So in the, in the stamp set, you have the, the big 
dogwood and then this beautiful little sprig with the buds. I'm going to use that one. Oh, I didn't use that. Maybe I could put that on the inside. We'll see. We'll see. But let's just get started with this. I may have to save that for a different project. Okay. Get this centered. Give that a little press. And there we have it. So pretty. I love that. Um, okay, I think I'm gonna have to. I think I'm gonna have to save that that pretty little stamp, or I might add it after the video. I have to think about that for a minute. I really love that stamp. That is this one. Say. Okay. Let's close this up before we have an incident. Get all the stuff out of the way so you can see. Okay, so there we go. There is uh, today's little shabby chic project. I think I'm going to add a little something here, so stay tuned to the thumbnail and you can see what, what happens over in this corner. I want to thank you so much for spending such a long time with me today. Um, I will get all my, all these extra little settings organized so that um, we're back to normal again. Um, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that if you would like to get one of these stamp sets, the detailed dogwood, I do have a couple of extras and I'm going to be giving them away in a prize patrol to the people um, that are on my mailing list for notes from Dandelion Cottage. And, um, and I will post that link below as well if you'd like to subscribe. And, uh, and in notes from Dandelion Cottage, I will give you all the details. Plus I'll be telling you about the upcoming classes like the painting, the hummingbird class, which is coming right up and, uh, and a bunch of other stuff as well. So please do that if you haven't done it already. And, uh, and that issue will be going out in the next couple of days. So keep your eye out for that in your um, in inbox, in your email. Um, I'm looking, looking at the comments here. And uh, everybody likes it. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm glad you like it. Um, Oh, Deb, she says, such a true artist. Well, thank you very much, Deb. But I just, you know, I always tell everybody, you know, we all start at the beginning. And, uh, and what you do is uh, takes knowledge and practice. But absolutely anybody can do it. It doesn't, there's no secret superpower or magical powers. All it takes is desire and discipline. You know, just, just the doing of it every day, putting time aside to do it. You know, that's what uh, going to art school was like for me. So you can do it too. You can do it. And I will help show you how. So have a, have a great evening. I will be back tomorrow with Paper Crafting Thursday. And, um, and then again on Saturday for Scrappin' Up Saturday, where I begin my scrapbooking journey. So I hope you'll, you'll hang out with me for that. All right, stay well, stay happy, stay creative. 
I'll see you next time.